I'm in a bit of a pickle. Not sure if I should take back the people who left me for dead or forgive them. I'm a 28-year-old female and I own a very successful business. I've always loved doing business since I was younger. I started my very first, quote, business when I was seven. I saved all the pocket money I got for months. Then I started a lemonade stand. My father thought it was a silly idea and very American-like. By the way, my family's Asian and my brother and I were born here in America. My dad is a traditional Asian man who has always been set in his ways. One of them was that education was the way forward. He already had everything planned out for me before I was even in first grade. But you see, I was dreaming of being a business owner. I saw the powerful women on television, of which there were few, and I wanted to be one of them. When I started first grade, my parents were never happy about my grades. I was good at math and failing everything else. My younger brother, on the other hand, was praised, while I was told just to do better. By then, I was selling bracelets and jewelry to my school friends, along with my two best friends. As the years passed, all I could focus on were my business plans, watching business TV shows and coming up with ways to make money. <laughs> and at the end of the term, I would have to answer to my parents for the bad grades that I had. The only thing I was passing were commerce subjects. My dad constantly drilled into me that I had an opportunity that other Asian girls did not, to have the American dream. I did not want to be a doctor or an engineer. I wanted to be my own boss. While my peers were starting to date boys and go to parties, I was getting introduced to the world of stock market. At 16 years old, I already had a plan on how I would invest to make my first million. My friends and I, who also wanted to be business owners, entered a nationwide competition that allowed us to play an investment game. We won, and with the $1,000 prize money, we started a printing business, which was also a success. We then expanded and we started other small hustles, but I was still an average student, which did not make my Asian parents happy. My father shouted at me when I told him how I had started a business with my money. He said that it could have gone to my college fund. My father really wanted me to be an engineer, along with my younger brother. I was not even really close to him. He was my parents' quote, golden child, and I was the disappointment. Don't get me wrong, I was grateful to my parents for everything that they did for me but they were really playing into the stereotype about Asians, and I wasn't having it. When I was 17 and my senior year and making a lot of money with my online business, I planned to use the money I was saving to put it back into my business. My grades were not that good for college, but I figured I would do some sort of short courses. Unfortunately, I had not exactly told my parents that. They assumed I was going to go along with their plan. It was not my fault that they had not listened to me ever since I was young. Anyways, college were starting to send in acceptance letters and my parents kept on asking me about them. Some peers had already been accepted in the universities and a few of them were even Ivy Leagues. As I was too busy working, my father called me downstairs. And when I went there, he was furious. See, I'd not sent out any of the applications and they told me to fill them out. My parents were so angry, but my dad was the maddest. I'll never forget the words that he said on the day that really broke me down. He quote, called me the most useless thing in his life, saying I ruined everything and now I was going to be poor. At least my brother was better at school than I was. <sighs> I said my business was successful, but then he said that they've come to a decision that I would go back to our country. They pulled strings and got me into an engineering course at some university back home. I stood up for myself and refused to go back. Then 
He told me to get out of his house if I wanted to act like such a grown-up. Because our culture, there's some unspoken rule that your parents make all decisions for you. And if you go against an important one like this, you'll be completely exiled by your family. So then I chose what made me happy and he told me to get out. While I was packing, I spoke to my brother for the last time. He was calling me stupid. He said he would make our parents proud and have a better life than me. I made a promise to myself that I would not fail no matter what. Before leaving, I spoke to my mom, asking her if she was really going to lose me like this. I did not want to leave. I was scared. But a huge part of me would have died if I stayed there. She told me that I had made my choice, so I left the house in tears. All I had were the clothes and my laptops. It wasn't like I could just withdraw all the money I had. There were legal formalities and whatnot. I called everyone that I knew, but no one said they could help me. My phone's battery ended up dying and I had nowhere to sleep. So then, I went and slept in the parking lot at Walmart, which was where I was for two days while looking for a place to stay. Most people did not want to rent out to me because of my age and my budget. Everything was tied up in the business, which I couldn't liquidize. Just when I thought I had lost hope, one of my friends whom I'd once been in business with got me a place to stay. It was not in a very nice neighborhood, and the living conditions were substandard and not what I was used to at all. But it was way better than sleeping in Walmart's parking lot. The place was using a dial-up connection as well, which made it hard for me to run my business. To say that I struggled would be an understatement for months. I worked to myself to the bone, working odd jobs like handing out pamphlets and waitressing. Then at night, when I got home tired, I would stay awake at hours, researching and implementing these strategies I learned about my business, which was, by the way, steadily growing. I survived on ramen noodles, energy drinks, and knockoff coffee pods. I cannot stomach the first two to this day, and it was all trial and error. When I won, it was good for me, but when I lost, I would pay for it dearly. There were so many times that I thought about going back to my family and saying that I would do what they wanted, but I would never forget that my father said I would be nothing. I was determined to show him that, you know what, I will be successful. Then finally, after struggling, staying in shitty apartments, and having a few dangerous run-ins, I was successful. I could not believe it when I started seeing exponential growth in my business. Finally, I was able to afford a good apartment in a safe area. For a long time, I'd been sleeping with a knife underneath my pillow after a couple attempted break-ins. But now, I'm safe. After a while, my business was worth a lot of money due to its earning potential, but I had my eyes on something else. I saved all the profit, then invested my money in another business, which blew up. Even though I was not smart in high school subjects, my intelligence when it comes to business-related issues is unlike no other. I take risk after extensive research, and I always rely on my instincts. Many thought the company I was buying would be nothing. It was already failing, and not only that, but I was also not taken seriously. I was a very young girl of Asian descent in the business world that was predominantly filled with one particular demographic. But I was used to fighting for what I wanted, and I put my blood, sweat, and tears into the company. Within three years, I was making... <laughs> A lot of money. I had over 60 employees and most of them were women and was making waves in the business industry. The people who had previously denied my opportunities were now the ones trying to get me to invest in <laughs> their companies. But I did not let it get to me because my company was only getting bigger. I hired people for their potential and ability to hustle and rarely because of their years of experience and of course, I gave back. I wanted young girls who could not afford to start their own business or who did not know how to get a stepping stone. 
my new mentorship program got the attention of local news, which was also becoming digital. A short documentary on me and the foundation was done, where they labeled me as one of the most competitive businesswomen to look out for. Finally, I had done what my father thought I would never do. I succeeded. I'd made my own mark on the world that he would not erase. In the beginning, I thought of going home so many times, but I had a point to prove. If there was something I got from my dad, I guess it was my stubbornness. Not even once had I searched for them. After my business blew up, I got out of town where I bought my own house. I never saw them. I did not know if they ever even remained in America after all those years or if they were even alive. But I held and still do hold on to bitterness for the way that they threw me out like I was nothing. So you can imagine my surprise when a while ago, my father contacted me. I did not give my personal number to just anyone for security reasons, so I was surprised when my assistant told me that a man who was claiming to be my father was on the phone and wanted to talk. I never talked about my family. I let people assume what they wanted. I thought it was a lie or some prank because my father had made it clear he was done with me. This was a decade ago. But then she said that he was calling me by a different name. The name was not on my birth certificate. It was my cultural name. Not even a lot of people knew it. I hesitated before taking the call. Everything that happened that night came back. I'd been trying so hard to forget it and almost succeeded. I let him speak and did not answer for a while. He told me that he'd seen me in a video and it's gone viral on social media. It was the video I took with the local magazine. He told me that when he saw it, he was so proud to see his daughter make it. I told him, you never call me again. Then I hung up. I did not want to see nor talk to him again. I tried to keep calm after that call, but it opened old wounds for me. Then, to make it worse, he did not stop calling or trying to reach me. There were letters. There were emails. Everything he sent me, I got rid of without reading. Not only that, but my mother also tried to call me too. And then, somehow, he was even let into my office and I was standing face to face with him. This was just a few days ago, but it seems like a minute ago. He had aged a lot and he wasn't looking very good. He was now thin, looking frail and a shadow of himself. Where he was once proud, he looked very uncertain of himself. This could not be the man who kicked me out when I was just a little girl. Since he was now here, I decided I'll give him a chance to speak. I did not care about what he would say, but maybe then he would leave me alone. He said that things are not going well for the family. After my brother graduated, he got into a very prestigious university, but when he turned 19, he got his now ex-girlfriend pregnant. He ended up having to drop out because of grades, which were bad, and had to work a regular job. He's no longer with the child's mother, but has to pay a hefty child support, of which he's barely making any money. He has a drinking problem, still stays at home, and has trouble staying employed for a long period of time. My father recently got retrenched because his company suffered huge loss because of the COVID wave. My mother has no experience working, but has been doing small jobs. And, as is, the economy is fragile. They're living on stipends from the government, and he told me he feels ashamed that he cannot provide for his family. Maybe, maybe I should have felt something. But, at the time, I did not feel anything at all. All I felt was the anger that I've been suppressing for the last couple of years, that trauma had carried through my relationships, making me unable to trust anyone. And yet, here he was, expecting me to feel sympathy. When I said that I did not hold back, I did not. I kept on going and going. I asked him, what if I've been kidnapped or murdered on the night and they kicked me out with nothing? 
I told him of how I had to work at bars where gross men made passes at me and touched me inappropriately just so I could have a place to stay. I told him of the mental and physical illness I suffered from them and how I could no longer be a child when I was 17. All the times brother called me stupid and saying he knew more than me even though he was younger, I would go to sleep crying. My family was never my biggest supporters. Not even one relative reached out or helped and was met with silence or insults. I poured it to him and he just sat there and took it all. He said that he made a mistake and he should have supported me, but he wanted a secure and safe future for me. He had been raised in a different time and a different country where it was not encouraged for young people to neglect education. But now, he had seen the error of his ways and needed forgiveness. I told him the truth. I cannot at this present time. But that was not the only thing he wanted from me. He asked me to give him a job at my company and not just any job. He said he wanted a nice paying job so he could take care of the family and have a better life. Here's the thing, my father has no expertise in my field and even if I gave him a job, it would have to be entry level, not the high position he used to have at his other company. And there's also the issue of nepotism. Sorry if I'm not jumping to be accused of that. He sat there in my office shredding tears for what seemed like a very long time. I told him just to leave. Well, he left, but he told me to think about it. And I cannot forget the look in his eyes when he did leave. He talked to only one person about this. My friend who helped me all those years ago. Even she does not know what I should do, but either way, she says that my decision's mine and I do not owe them anything. So, my mind is split on this. On one hand, anything could have happened to me on that night. I was glad nothing did when I spent the night in the cold Walmart parking lot I'll never forget. I also have the scars to prove where I've been. I cannot forget the nights I cried myself to sleep or how I felt when I saw other children with their parents. It's been over 10 years and they were never there. I survived on the kindness of strangers. Then, on the other hand, the economy's poor and they're struggling. I don't know how I feel about them, but my parents are old now and they were raised in a different time. Yet, I cannot reconcile the pity I feel for them with how scared I was as a young girl in the big bad world alone. So, all this for me to ask, what would you do in my situation? I'm losing sleep over this and I would appreciate any outside insight into this whole situation. Should I give my dad a job at my company or is there any alternative I've not thought about? Thank you for your advice in advance.